Hello! Now, if any of you follow my Instagram, which is TashaB1237, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, you will know that I recently climbed Mount Kinabalu. So obviously, with something that exciting, being a YouTuber as I am, I had to vlog it. So I thought I'd tell you the story of how that went. First things first though, before we did that, we visited the National Park. And at the National Park, there's something called the Hot Springs. Here's how that went. Dad's befriending the locals. <laughs> We're in the car at the moment, driving to the National Park to get ready to climb the mountain and visit the hot springs. But because we had a pit stop to go and get some food, we got out of the car and nearly like, caused a traffic jam because everyone stared at us because we're white. So Dad's decided that the best way to get around this is just to nod and wave at them and then they get really happy and they nod and wave back. So we're in the car and we've been in here for about five minutes since we left that little pit stop place and two of the locals Dad's already befriended. Okay, on our way to the hot springs, halfway up Mount Kinabalu. No, we're not, are we halfway up? We're sort of a little bit up, not properly started trekking up the mountain yet, but... Hey, didn't we take a photo here last time? I'm pretty sure last time we came here we did a photo right by this bit here, but... Is that a new one? Oh, okay. Come on, tell us a bit about the hot springs. Hot spring is the hot water, it's the natural hot water there, you can go and have a... Like, there's like a wash, a bath and things like that. You will see. You basically have a bath in the hot springs and it's all natural and hot. Yeah, natural hot water. Naturally hot. It's changed a lot though. Has it? It's different, isn't it? Compared to last time. The first pool that I actually went in at the hot springs was the cold one. I'm not actually pregnant before anyone asks. Calm down. Booty, booty. <laughs> got it, got it. You little pork. <laughs> <laughs> We've made a pit stop at one of the little marketplaces and mum, my aunts and uncles and dad have all gone out to go and get something called durian. It is the stinkiest food I have ever smelt in my life. Like, honestly, the smell of it gives me a headache. It's disgusting. What, what do you guys think of durian? Hate it. So we're going to stay in the car because we cannot abide the smell of them. They are the most vile things. If you had to describe it, what would you say it would smell like? It's worse than vomit. Vomit smells. Yeah, it's, it's a very distinct, it's a very distinct kind of flavour that kind of gets up your nose and then doesn't go away at all. Very, very it's, bad. It's not good. It's... It doesn't, doesn't smell good. Then we finally started on Mount Kinabali. 
on our way to the mountain. We are here at the start. Well, no, not the starting point. At the the base of the mountain. Uh, Where are we? It's a video. Oh, it's a video. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in my video. And uh, we've just sort of checked in. Looks like a good day. So a uh, good day to climb a mountain. Don't I hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> This poor bloke is a porter and he takes all of those boxes up the mountain. I think he walks them up the mountain. You can pay him to carry your bags, but I think that's a little bit harsh. How are you feeling, Seb? Um, I don't really know yet. I don't really know yet. No. We're at the base of the mountain. We're literally just about to start climbing now. Yep. We've signed in. We have our, our name badge tag things. We're all ready. We're all ready to go. Feeling good. At our first pit stop. Safe to say I'm dying. My glasses keep steaming up so I can't really see where I'm going. How are you feeling, Seb? Mm. You good? Two and a half kilometers high out of six. We're struggling. Dad keeps falling behind, bless him. But we're, we made it. We will get there. We've got six kilometers to climb today and then we're going to do the rest of it tomorrow. Um, we're going to get most of it done today though. Just keep going. This is the hardest thing physically I've ever done. I really hope I don't drop this because I'm trying to focus on climbing. Seb's up ahead. I think quite far up ahead. And Dad's quite far behind me. But this is what I'm climbing up. Mount Kinabadi. We are five kilometres high. We're stopping at six kilometres. So I've got one kilometre left. And then we're going to stop for the night. Let me just show you here. This is where we are. Five kilometres. And we've got to get up to here. Six kilometres. And then tomorrow we're going to make the track all the way up to the top there. So it's shorter to go, but a lot steeper. I'm not looking forward to whatever this is. This looks very steep. Like, I'm already dying. I'm currently on my own halfway up this mountain and I keep seeing porters so people who are like taking stuff up and down and they're like are you on your own and I'm like no my brother's up in front and my dad's back behind because I don't want to tell them I'm alone I don't know what will happen if I do but I have to keep stopping because it's so it's very steep like my hip bones here these really hurt at the moment so I could really do with a bath right now don't have one though. And someone said the showers at the top are cold. Which is great, but I mean, I feel gross anyway. I will do this though, determination. We'll get there. I really hope we're close. I'm so dead. I hope it's like not all the way at the top of there. It's so high up, I can't even see the ground. <sighs> God. Don't know where dad is, don't know where Seb is. I bet Seb's already at the, uh, the lodge. Meanwhile, at the base of the mountain, Mum spent an entire day eating durian and took Alicia along with her. Safe to say, she did not enjoy herself. Made it to the top. Well, I found Seb again. He's been waiting here for about half an hour, he thinks. Um, we just worked out that I did it in four hours and 45 minutes. Uh, it's not too bad. I'm quite proud of that. Four hours and fifteen. So I did it in four hours and he's been here half an hour or so. Um, but we made it and I'm, we could probably go in and find our, our bit. We've got to show our badge. Oh, uh, okay, good job we still got it. But we might wait for Dad for a bit. Yeah, I was think. thinking I'd wait for Dad to see if he's alright. Yeah, just make sure he's made it okay. Some of the bits oh, up your, there... Oh, your hair is sweaty as Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Some of the bits there, I was that like... That felt horrible. Christ, how am I going to make it up here? How is Dad going to make it up I'm here? I'm wearing a hoodie. Yeah, it's, ni know. it's nice and sunny up here though. I should have my sunglasses. Yeah, I've got the 100 plus. I don't know what it tastes like. Just doing a bit of stretching. I'm teaching Seb. Go on, Seb. Right. As long as you can. Okay, put your legs. Put your feet I can't together. Even get my legs like that. Put your feet together. Okay. I won't be able to do that. Yeah, you can. Come on. I'm on a rock. I'm on a rock. Yeah, but this is a very, very unstable. Okay, we'll get on your get on the flat rock behind you. No, I'm good. Okay. 
is that as how far down as you can put the... <laughs> Mate, come on, try a bit harder. And then you got to lean forward as well. Can you seriously not stretch? Oh my god. These things are going to split. Oh, you have to do it in your underpants then. <laughs> Drinking some 100 plus, which I think is Malaysia's energy drink. It's um, Malaysia's way of trying to attempt an energy drink. Yeah, it's. I think it's supposed to. Hang on. Menu man, isotonic. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's not even filming my face. See, because I'm filming on my phone and I didn't want to take my camera with me. At least I can see now what I'm doing. Well, I can't because the sun and no sunnies, but I mean. Better. I didn't even realise, but I've eaten all of these but one. Seb, would you like the last one? No. Nope. Needed the energy. Yeah, you made it! You're alive! You alright? How are you feeling? Terrible. Oh. <laughs> I was like that. Every sort of few steps I had to stop. Yeah. So I just kept on going. Push through oh. the pain. My hips started hurting about four and a half kilometres up, and I was like, oh god, here we go. I was I was literally just yeah. down like a few meters down there and I just had to I just stopped for like ten minutes because my leg had a cramp and it would not go. And I was yeah. like go. Yeah. Is that the top up there? Yeah. No. Okay, so we're at the little place that we're gonna stay and sleep now. I've showered, I've washed my hair, which even though I haven't hair dried it, it's still curly, which is quite good. I have so many spots right now, it's very depressing. Um, but we've just had dinner, which was a mixture. There was spaghetti um, and a range of other foods. Dad is not that hungry, bless him. He has had a lot of sugar today, so I think it's messed up his system quite a bit. Seb ate a bit. Are you feeling okay now? Seb's feeling good. I'm feeling good, just a bit. My legs hurt a bit, but I mean, that's expected. It's getting quite cold up here. I was napping a little bit before we came down for dinner because I had wet hair and the wall, the temperature out here is getting colder. I was very cold, so I got under my duvet. But I've eaten, I've had some three in one tea, which was needed, which is very much needed. And I think we're just gonna chill and then go to bed, or maybe just go straight to bed. And then because we got to be up early tomorrow, it's like two o'clock or something we need to get up. Oh, so we're leaving at, we're leaving at half past two. We are getting breakfast at two. So I need to go. We need to be up by like half one to come and eat. I'm going to sleep in the clothes I'm going to climb in tomorrow. We've only got two kilometres left, but it is a very steep descent. Up. Insect. Very steep way up. I don't know what the opposite of descent is. If you know, leave it in the comments below, please. So we're going to go and see the sunrise, hopefully, if we make it there in time. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, yeah. it's 2 30 in the morning. We're about to start our last bit of this trek. It's going to be cold. We have headlamps, we have hats, we have gloves, we have lots and lots of layers. Um, no bags, so. I've stuffed water bottle in my pocket. I cannot guarantee it will stay there. But hopefully we'll manage to get up there in time to see the sunrise. I think we've got about three hours. So should be all right. Now Dad and I didn't actually get to the top of the mountain in time to see the sunrise, but Seb did manage it and he very kindly took some footage for me. So this is what he managed to get at the top of the mountain at approximately 5.30 in the morning. As I was filming this, I didn't actually realise I had no sound, but what I think I was talking about was the fact that we found Sebastian again. He was waiting for us near the top of the mountain and it was absolutely freezing up there. Poor kid, he was going purple. Um, and then I complained about how cold it was as well. We didn't quite make the sunrise, but we're at the top. Oh, Ooh, sorry. <laughs> We're on our way down now. It's a lot easier going down than it is going up. It's less straining. But uh, we're doing the whole lot in one day, so we're before yesterday. 
And there goes my sound again. Um, basically, I was talking about the fact that we did the first six kilometres the first day, slept and then woke up and did the last two and a half kilometres the next day. But the fact that we had to go in the same day all the way down the bottom of the mountain. I was also talking about how it was the hardest thing I've ever done, both physically and mentally. Um, towards the top, I did nearly cry a couple of times. I have no idea whether they were sad tears or happy tears or what kind of tears they were, but I just wanted to cry because it was so hard. Um, it was also very cold at the top, so my nose kept running, which probably didn't help the whole crying situation. But I was also uber proud of myself and also my dad for getting to the very top of the mountain. All those people who said to dad that it would be really hard, that he probably wouldn't be able to do it, that he, he should tr do some training. He did a little bit of training, we both did, but after not working out for sort of three, four weeks, and the fact that in Malaysia all they did was feed us, it did make things quite difficult. But we did it, and he is 52 mine, so I was so proud of him for getting all the way to the top. We were the, amongst the last ones to get there, um, I found it particularly hard on the second day because I couldn't breathe. It's something about the atmosphere up there, it's a lot thinner, there's less oxygen. So I was really struggling on the second day and I dropped to the same pace as Dad did. But we managed to get there at the top, slowly but surely, with our guide with us. I had to keep stopping every now and then just so we could breathe. But we did it at the very top and the views were amazing. So I was very glad that we managed to do it. Um, going down was quite hard in the way that my knees and my thighs after we'd finished were in so much pain. So I didn't film very much at the top because it was so cold and I just kind of wanted to go and I was still fighting back tears but you can see for miles. Our um, guides as well were incredible and they said it was a really mild day for it so we've been very lucky. If anyone else wants to climb Mount Kinabalu, our guides were called Danson and John John Wayne, I think, or John Wynn, one of the two, but they were both really good. John Wynn stayed with Dad for the whole of yesterday, just to make sure he was all right, because I was a bit up ahead. And then today, Danson helped me and Dad, because I found it really difficult to breathe. I didn't vlog very much on the way up because it was so difficult to breathe. Oh look, return of the clips with no sound. Joyous. Honestly, anyone would think I don't know how to do this. <laughs> um, what else can I say that I haven't already explained? Uh, afterwards, my legs really hurt. Going down any downhills or descents was very difficult. I climbed down the mountain like a toddler climbs down the stairs, holding onto the handrail with both hands, going down it sideways one foot at a time. It wasn't as hard breathing but it was very strenuous on my legs look at this view we're like above the clouds and that is what we've halfway down at the moment and that was all the footage i got so i do hope you enjoyed this week's video maybe a little bit more insightful to the life of climbing a mountain personally i don't ever want to climb another mountain again Honestly, I was so sore for the next few days afterwards. Um, me and my dad were saying that it was a lot more, it was probably a lot more difficult climbing up the mountain because you had to keep stopping and having to breathe. But climbing down the mountain, was st you didn't stop as often, but it was a lot more strenuous on your legs. So they're both as bad as each other really and I've decided mountain climbing is not for me. But if anyone else wants to do it, please be my guest. The views from the top are absolutely incredible. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already and do be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Other than that, I will see you again next week with another video. Bye!